I've spent the last few days reading demonstrated competency number two, the SWOT analysis. I've finished almost all of them. I wanted to stop for a second and make a couple of comments and share this with you. A lot of the feedback I'm giving you, I'm dictating over Dragon Voice transcription. And so I am inclined when I speak to you now to say at the end of every sentence, period, and then go on. So bear with me. The SWOT analysis. Many times when folks are listing their strengths, they're laying them out rather generically, and they don't say a lot. If, for example, you say, uh, one of my strengths is I have military experience, my reaction is, so? What good is it? Uh, if you say, I have a varied work experience as a strength, my first response is to say, couldn't hold a job, huh? You see what I'm saying? It's not what you have done or, or what you can do that you cite as a strength. It's of what benefit is that? What are, what are the benefits and value that come out of that experience? That's your strength, the value you can create. You may have to do a little translation from what you did to what it means. You see what I'm saying? When you speak to weaknesses, for example, several folks have said, uh, I'm a little weak on public speaking. Great, understand that, been there, done that. But for the strategic plan process, the next question is, so what are you going to do about it? So as you list your weaknesses somewhere in your strategic planning, you've got to figure out either how to preclude them so they don't come back to haunt you, or how to overcome them, how to face up to them and do something about it. A common suggestion I've made to a lot of people with respect to some weaknesses is read about it. Create a reading list. Go to the self-help section of the library or the bookstore. Search the journal on Google. If you have trouble dealing with confrontation, there's a hundred books or more written out there that will at least give you some perspective on that and build your ability to respond to those situations. So the strategic planning process is here's what's going on and here's what I'm going to do about it, either to take advantage of it or to preclude it, defend against it, you know, face it down. When you get into opportunities, if you say uh, the economy is growing, again, so? If that's an opportunity, what are you going to do about it? If you say uh, there's an opportunity in my company for promotion, that's great, but somewhere in your plan I want to know what are you going to do about taking advantage of that opportunity? What specific actions are you going to take? What steps are you going to take? What's the timeline on that? How are you going to benchmark those steps to be sure you're, you're accomplishing them and doing them on schedule? See what I'm driving at? More than anything, perhaps, when you get to the combination of weaknesses and threats, goodness gracious, that's got to be addressed and in detail. What are you going to do about that? Because that'll sneak up and bite you. All right? Now, concluding comment just for a minute. The best SWOT analyses I've read have been four to eight pages long with incredible detail. Good detail in describing why a strength is a strength. Good detail in describing what weak a weakness is and why it's a weakness and why it can haunt you. Great detail in every part of the matrix. Remember your first matrix, what are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Those got to be listed in detail, not just a kind of a shorthand to yourself. Spell them out. The more you spell this stuff out, the more ideas will occur to you on what to do about it. And in the, in the sense that I'm reviewing them, the more I can hear and see from you, the better our job I can do in terms of have you thought about doing this or what about doing that. Too many people are dealing with this assignment like it's a case of i got to fill in these blocks, I'll just make up something and plug it in and then I'll cut and paste it and plug it in down here and I'll give you about two sentences on what I'm going to do. Okay, I've done the job. There is a term for that. That's doing just enough to get by or what you think is enough to get by, it's not. It's called satisficing. If you are a satisficer, that's the certain road to professional ruin, okay? particularly as a manager. Now, I am intentionally not being real specific on my directions for this because I want to see what you're going to do. I want to see how creative you can be and, and just how engaged you're going to get in this process. Why am I doing that? Because in many cases in the real world, you're not going to have real complete directions on what you're supposed to do. The boss is going to have a general idea of what he needs, 
and he's going to say, go do the best you can with it and bring it back. And if you do just enough to get by, you won't be there very long. And instead, you've got to turn that around and say, what's the very best, most complete job I can do on this, both in the way it's presented and in the, the, the quality and quantity of the content? What's the best I can do? When you don't get a lot of direction, you have got to overdo it, not underdo it. Because there are a lot of other people out there competing for the next job right there beside you. And the ones that take on the, the uh, responsibilities, who display the initiative, who become more creative, they're the ones that shine. The bulk of the people out there will be satisficers. Don't be among them. And if you're not, the competition is far more limited. Strive to excel. Do more than you think is required. You can't go wrong by doing that. Okay? Thanks.